at the start, it's probably gonna be really good. And by the end, it's probably gonna get messy. Let's go. We start with some really nice round steak. It's not fatty, it's nice and lean, and we're gonna cut it in little cubes. So, as you can see, about that thin. And we will cut them in little kind of inch cubes. I, I'm a really proud uh, Canadian of Italian extraction. And um, I was really lucky to have a really beautiful close relationship with my grandparents, with my Nona and my Nono. And, um, you know, food brings us a lot of joy in our house, but it also brings back a lot of the memories of our happiest times of being together. And every time I, I cook something like this or I'm, or I'm eating it, I think about them. To be really honest with you, if I go into my drawer, I show you every single morning what I drink from. And this, I will wash this after because I just touched beef. But that's them. That's grandma and grandpa. And there's not a day that goes by that I don't miss them. I start off every single morning by kissing them twice and having some coffee. Now, if it's okay with you, what I wanna do is I wanna pour some a little bit of virgin olive oil into our pan, and I want to start to uh, fry just some onions. If you want, you can throw a little bit of grated carrots in there. It's delicious. All right. So on a low medium heat, I'm going to do a little olive oil. I, uh, I started cooking this dish when I was about 15 or 16 years old, and I used to stand in the kitchen and watch my Nona, and Grandma would be cooking, and I'd always want to taste it. And, I always like the rice a little bit al dente. If you don't know, the risotto later we use a little bit, a bit of arborio rice, where I, I, sometimes if it cooks too long, it gets kind of, kind of soft, but I always liked it a little bit more al dente, a little bit more crunchy. So um, I remember coming home from school and I could smell the kitchen every day. I'd come home and we'd watch grandma cook this. And so here we go. There we go. We start. With these onions, you almost start making like a little roux, kind of, where we kind of get everything fried and softened and already, before anything, this kitchen smells amazing. What I like to do is I like to keep a pan of water, or a pot of water, boiling with a little bit of chicken stock. Excuse me. So I do a little bit of chicken stock. And uh, once it's boiling, we don't crumble up the chicken stock. And we keep that boiling. And we'll just keep that. We'll always have boiling water. Always have boiling water going. So that when our onions are cooked and we put the tomato sauce in and the paste, we can add the rice. And once the rice gets added, we'll start adding little bits of that boiling water and stirring it up so that we get the rice to start to soften and take in the moisture, which makes it this really yummy, Yummy, thick thing. Okay, so now, once we have our onions and they're brown and everything smells amazing, we're gonna add our round steak. Nice and easy, put a little more oil in if you have to, but hopefully the onions have given you a little bit of moisture. So, now obviously, we are gonna brown our round steak. I'm not joking, I think a big part of my wife falling in love with me was with me on our honeymoon, saying to her, I'm gonna cook things for you, you know? And, and uh, at the time, you know, she was young and she didn't, now she outcooks me, she out everything to me. Basically, I think everybody that looks from the outside in realizes I have married a better person than me. But uh, there was a time when I was the risotto man. You know what, the only thing I'm really cooking most of the time is for myself really late at night because the truth is when I come home from a gig, this is me, literally. In a tux with my bow tie down, making something for myself at three o'clock in the morning. But the kids, really, mommy's the best cook. They want mommy's food. Okay, so listen, this has happened. We have this beautiful brown beef and onions. It's gorgeous. So what I'm gonna do now is on the same heat, it's a little bit high, we're gonna lower it down a little bit to a nice medium, 
And I'm going to take this tomato sauce, and we're going to put that tomato sauce in. Now, some people like to use a nice paste. You can always use a nice paste. It's always good. And as you can see here, we're already boiling this water. We'll put a little bit more in, though. We're boiling this water with the chicken stock. We've started to cook this up. You're seeing now, this is nice and, nice and warm. So once we do that, we are going to get our rice. We've got about uh, two cups, which is good. I like, I like that. I like this, this actually expands. And if you have a big family, it's really hearty and really great. It feeds a lot of people. So here we go. We're going to throw this rice in. Now this is where it gets super important because we can never stop mixing. Once we start mixing, if the rice gets stuck to the bottom of the pan, we're in trouble. All right, so we're gonna mix this beautiful rice in. And honestly, you guys, just aesthetically, aesthetically, look at how beautiful that is. No? God, that should be in the sexiest issue. Should it not? Now, here we go. So now we've mixed this all up. You can see it's starting to smoke up here like that. Now you can see it's getting nice and, and warm. So now, so that we can get the rice to start to cook down and cook, we're gonna add, we're gonna add this stock. Okay, so here we go. We've added this in and you can see already, the second I stopped stirring, it started to get to the bottom of the pan. So once, we get to this process where we're, we're, we're adding in the water and we're starting to cook down the rice. Now we want to turn, we want to start to turn it down because it'll burn pretty easily. It gets pretty hot. And uh, basically, we keep adding water for the next about 25 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, while your children or grandchildren, like I was, disturb you and try to taste it and eat it and um, tell you that it's done when it's really not done. And that's what I did to my grandma and grandpa until my grandma would tell me to get lost and get out of the kitchen. What I really like to do is, is this. I like to get a beautiful piece of Parmesan cheese and I like to actually cut a nice big chunk of it and absolutely just throw it in there. And now as we mix it, it'll start to melt and every bite that you have will have this beautiful, yummy, gooey Parmesan cheese within every little morsely bite. Yummy. All right, guys. So that's it. We're almost at the end. I'd say we're about two minutes away from having a perfect, perfect risotto. Um, it's a little bit al dente, which I like. Um, God, it smells beautiful. It's really hearty, very, very sexy meal time. Thanks for hanging out with me in my kitchen. I hope you go home and make this risotto for your family. They're gonna love you.